there guys, how's it going Reaper here? Today's video is going to be an explanation of the mechanics of the new Rumble game mode which just got added to Rocket League, so if you're a Rocket League player and maybe haven't played in a while, this was a free update that got released for Rocket League so this is not a DLC, so everyone got this update for free which was nice. Basically what this did, it introduced a new game mode called Rumble in which everyone intimately gets free power ups in the same sort of style as like a Mario Kart game, so introduces some sort of new weapons and abilities you can trigger when you like which kind of mixes up the game mode a bit and adds a bit more strategy and fun to the game and kind of just changes things around a bit. So what I thought it might be a good idea to do is to kind of make a video just explaining all the mechanics of the weapons and how they function in the game. I'll preface this video by saying I've worded it as a guide. It's not a guide so much as how best to utilise the weapons, but more of kind of an informative video for someone who's maybe unfamiliar with Rumble. Just explains how the new game mode works and what the different power-ups doing the game and hopefully if people are playing and there's some confusion about the exact mechanics of some of the power-ups hopefully I can alleviate that as well so this is not this is not a how best to utilize these power-ups this is just an explanation of the game mode and its mechanics so with that in the way let's get on with it when the match kicks off it's going to kick off in the same way as any normal match except there's going to be a 10 second timer in the bottom right hand corner of the screen when this timer runs out everyone's going to receive one free random power-up the mechanics of which I'm going to explain in a minute, so don't worry about that too much for now. These are triggered by pressing R, and you have them until you actually use the power-up before they're lost. However, you won't receive a new one until you use the one you already have. Once you use a power-up, that 10 second time gets reset, and you'll get another free random one after a 10 second period. You do retain whichever power-up you had if you get demolished after you respawn. However, if one team does score, all the power-ups are going to be lost, and everyone gets reset to a 10 second timer. So for the first 10 seconds of every kickoff, nobody is going to have any power-ups. Probably the most basic of the power-ups is the Haymaker, which is denoted by a big red boxing glove. This can be triggered whenever there's a red crosshair over the ball, which is going to show when you're in range. When you press R, this is simply going to project a big red boxing glove out, hit the ball in the opposite direction of your car. It's probably the more basic upgrades, but it is worth noting the actual facing of your car is not going to affect the trajectory in any way. Basically what the game does is determine where your car is, where the ball is, draw a line straight towards it and hit it in that direction. So you could be facing sideways, the ball is always going to be punched opposite where your car is in relation to the ball. Next up we've got the boot, which unsurprisingly is depicted by a big brown boot picture. This works in much the same way as the haymaker except it targets an enemy car as opposed to the ball, so you can use this to send enemy players flying. The power hitter is depicted by a big orange clenched fist and is a good power up for anyone who likes to smash up other cars. When you use this for a limited time your car is going to be surrounded by an orange glow and you'll demolish an enemy car regardless of how fast you're going as long as you touch it. Additionally, while it's active, if you hit a ball it's going to hit far faster than it normally would. Using the tornado power up will cause a tornado to appear around you for several seconds. If during this time you come near the ball or enemy players it will cause them to be lifted up and will start spiraling around above you whilst you remain near them. Whilst it will disrupt the movement of the ball and of enemy players, it won't lock them in place above you. They're not locked in position so they can fly around, they can try and boost out, use any other power up, or dislodge the ball or themselves in any way. If you use the spike upgrade, spikes are going to sprout from your car and remain there for several seconds. If during this time you come into contact with the ball, it's going to come locked to your vehicle so you can drive it around attached to you however you like. Your opponents can dislodge the ball from you by either hitting it with a lot of impact, or using a power up such as the haymaker to knock it from you. The plunger power up is going to fire a plunger at the ball which is attached to a rope which is in turn attached to your car. This basically means when the rope is fully taut and you're driving along you can temporarily drag the ball behind you although only very briefly but with a lot of momentum. It's also worth noting if you attach the ball and the ball already has some of its own momentum it may cause it to swing behind you in an arc rather than going straight forward. As in the ball won't get pulled directly towards your car the rope will go taut and it will go swinging around based on what direction you're driving as well as how much momentum the ball has in itself. It's also worth noting the energy that's applied to the ball isn't caused by the rope automatically dragging back towards your car, it's just when the rope is fully taut, the momentum of your car is going to pull it along with it. So if you're right next to the ball, this is going to do very little, you need to be moving, the rope's going to go taut when it's attached and it's going to yank the ball along with you. When you use the swapper power up, you will, after a brief delay, have your position swap with one enemy player. During this brief delay, both cars will glow slightly, so you will know if you're quick in your reactions that you're about to be swapped and you can try and move slightly to try and disrupt your enemy's plans. The magnetizer also causes the ball to be pulled towards your car but the mechanics are slightly different to the plunger. 
Basically, this operates on a timer. When you activate the magnetizer for a limited amount of time, if you remain within a certain distance of the ball, the ball is going to be dragged towards your car. However, while it does last quite a long time, the ball can be dislodged if you drive too quickly, or if another player hits the ball, it's going to fly out and the magnet isn't going to be strong enough to hold it in place. However, if you can maintain enough speed and without another player hitting the ball too hard, you can cause the ball to follow you around for quite a long amount of time. The grappling hook is going to fire a rope out and attach itself to the ball, which is going to quickly pull your car in towards it and is eventually going to cause your car to hit the ball, knocking it in a certain direction. Now bear in mind the grappling hook is quick, but not instantaneous. It's not going to affect the trajectory of the ball in any way, however other players can still hit the ball whilst you're travelling towards it. So you've got to think about where the ball is going to end up when you finally come into contact with it. If you use the freezer power up on the ball, it's going to become locked in place immediately regardless of how quickly the ball was moving before you use the power up. If the ball was airborne, it will stay suspended in that spot in midair. A frozen ball can be broken by a power up such as the haymaker or by a moving car. If nobody touches a frozen ball for several seconds, it will eventually defrost and if it was airborne, it will fall straight to the ground. The disruptor targets an enemy player and it's going to make their car boost fully for several seconds. This is going to make it very difficult for them to control properly, especially if you hit them while they were airborne. However, when this effect ends, whatever player you targeted is going to have a full 100 boost meter to get back in the fight. So I think I've covered all the basics there, so hopefully that's everything you need to know about the Rumble game mode. So if you have any more questions or anything I think I've missed, please leave a comment below. I'll see if I can answer it if you've got a question or if you're confused in any way. Other than that, I'll leave you with a final tip, which is to remember in the standard game mode, but even more so in Rumble, when the timer hits zero, the match does not end until the ball hits the ground. And you'll see that in this last little clip here. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and you got some good information out of it. And I'll see you next time. Thank you very much.